Praise be to God. Hallelujah. We always say at the breaking of the day that this is the day which the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad throughout. Hallelujah. And of course, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we seek to honor and glorify. Praise the name of the Lord. We are reminding ourselves as people of God that we do not own our lives anymore uh, because we were bought with a price. Jesus, you know, He redeemed us. He paid the price so He can take us back unto Himself, reconnect us to His Father. And so we don't own this life anymore. And when we live this life every day, we now live this life every day for Jesus. Amen. That's why walking with God, walking with Jesus, walking in the power of the Holy Spirit every day of our life, that is what it means to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. It's not a Sunday thing. It is an everyday thing. Praise God. And so, as we are continuing our lesson concerning our walk with God, we realize and we understand the special role of the Holy Spirit. There are three very important elements in our walk with the Lord that will help us sustain uh, our pacing that we will be able to walk continuously until the end. Two of these are indispensable. Yeah. And the other one, you know, is also important but not as, uh, not as important as the two because they can, we can do away with them there will be times when we will be walking without them. But these two are indispensable in our walk with God. What are these two first? Hmm. One is the Holy Spirit Himself. Hallelujah. And the other one is the Word of God. So we have the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Word of God, which are indispensable in our walk with God. We cannot walk properly without the Holy Spirit and without God's Word. We cannot also walk enjoying <coughs> this walk apart from the Holy Spirit and the Word. We cannot also walk productively <laughs> without the aid, the help of the Holy Spirit and without the inspiration that we get from God's Word. Praise be to God. We cannot also walk triumphantly, victoriously, apart from the Holy Spirit and from God's Word. As I said, these two are indispensable in our daily walk until the last end, the last moment of our life. It's either, you know, we will graduate from this earthly domain of ours or Jesus will come back and take us home unto Himself. Whichever comes first, you and me, and the many others who has joined the ranks. Hallelujah. Of committed people who will who have decided to follow Jesus. 
Yes, we are committed to walk with Jesus till the end. Amen. But another group or another item that's also important is a holy community. And these are people like you and me, you know, weak and frail, so many issues, still growing and still maturing, imperfect people. But these are people who have separated themselves. That's why are called holy. Holy means set apart. They heard the voice of the Spirit inviting them to join this journey. They feel the touch of the Spirit giving them the grace to respond properly to God's invitation. And they experience the grace of the Spirit giving them the courage to decide and to embark on this journey of walking with God. Hallelujah. And we need them also for daily inspiration, encouragement from one another, praying for each other, inspiring, teaching, learning from one another, working together as a team to also become useful as we walk with the Lord. We need this tree. Praise be to God. Amen. That is why it is of utmost importance that we know the Holy Spirit more. He comes upon us as a spirit of grace and supplication. He comes upon us as a spirit of wisdom and revelation so we will know him better we will know him more the one sent by the father in the name of jesus to help us to comfort to counsel advocate for us in our walk with the lord praise god he is also the spirit of power and love and sound mind or self-discipline Praise be to God. That's why for the last how many weeks we have been talking about the Holy Spirit. And I pray and trust the Lord that by this time you have learned so many things about Him. You have grown significantly in your partnership with Him. You have deepened your intimacy with Him. You are now talking with freedom, with liberty, with joy and excitement. Talking with Him is called prayer. Prayer is talking or conversing with God. And as you have learned to talk to the Holy Spirit more, you have also learned to listen to Him properly. And by this time, you're able to hear Him. Some of you hears the Holy Spirit quiet, faintly. <laughs> but praise be to God, somehow you have started to hear Him, know that it is Him speaking, talking to you. Others of you may have already grown a little bit more in your listening to Him so that you have become familiar to His gentle, loving and compassionate voice. You have learned to distinguish his voice from the many voices around you that's trying to get your attention, that's trying to get your ears to listen to them. By this time, praise be to God, because it is so critical that each child of God is not only talking to God, but he is also or she is also listening properly. Ah, so that the conversation between a father and a child becomes healthy and strong. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we are able to hear the Lord, the Holy Spirit, as we are able to hear Him clearly, a little bit louder, louder than, than before, you know, then we shall be able also to Obey 
with what He is putting in our hearts and in our minds. We shall be able to act promptly. Praise God. As an indication of our faith, our trust, our confidence in Him, we act, we obey, we comply with what He is putting in our hearts. Even though we are a little bit scared because we don't exactly know what to do, how to do, when to do them. But we realize we shall become more adept in our walk with God when we start obeying and continue obeying. Praise be to God. And so let me invite you. Uh, this in, and continue. Let me invite you to continue with this journey. In fact, I should appreciate so many of you, especially BCC people, who have joined with us in this walk, and we have already been to a lot of things. No? We have gone through the the period of the COVID. <laughs> you know. Even before the COVID came, we already started our journey, you know, in walking with God in a simpler manner, in a more uh, organic manner, much, much closer to the New Testament pattern. We have learned to renew our mind when it comes to what it means to be a follower of Jesus. When before... We have been particularly, you know, uh, enamored with a building, a program, you know, a set of people who will be standing before us, you know, to speak or minister to us, whether they teach the word or lead us in worship, lead us in songs, lead us in prayer, you know. But praise be to God, Holy Spirit is able to help us so that today more and more we realize that even without buildings, even without programs, you know, even if those who stand before us to usher us and help us in the things of God may change regularly our walk does not change. We are becoming more and more con consistent in our walk with the Lord. Praise be to God. We are more and more becoming resolute in our decision to walk with God, even if many are turning their backs on the Lord. Many are taking, you know, detours. Hallelujah. But there are also an increasing number of people from among you, our precious listeners and viewers, who are, you know, asking, asking the help of the Holy Spirit regularly. You have received so much encouragement from Him and from the Word that you yourselves are finding the joy of what it means to be a Christian in a simpler way, closer to the New Testament pattern, closer to how Jesus lived his life. We all know that Jesus lived his life very simply. He was born in a manger, you know, in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, you know, grew up in a home of his foster parents, Joseph and Mary, who themselves were very simple. We all know Joseph was a mere carpenter. And Jesus grew up in that setting. So we can imagine that Jesus learned the basics of what it means to work with his father in the carpentry shop, sharpening the tools, handing the tools to his father when his father asks for them, helping bring the uh, wood, the lumber that's needed, maybe going to houses in order to bring 
the stuff that already been done and deliver them to the customers, etc. Jesus grew up with his hands trained in doing the hard works of life in order to eke out a living, a simple way of living. But in all this, he was growing in wisdom and in the fear of God, in submission to his earthly parents. But more importantly, in submission to his Father in heaven. He learned obedience to the things that he suffered. Hallelujah. Amen. In a simple setting, praise God. And so we follow that example. We are determined to live a simpler life, but a more authentic, credible, transparent life. There is no need for pretense. There is no need for play acting. Uh, so that when people see us, what they see us is what they will get. There is no need for sugar coating. There is no need for wrappers to wrap around us, to present us to the world in a much better way, in much better form. No. Who we are as the Lord builds our life is enough. Praise God. More and more we realize, more and more I realize that Jesus is enough. Holy Spirit is enough. Hallelujah. God's word is enough in its rawest form. All we ask to do is allow the Holy Spirit to help us. He was the one that's left behind, given by the Father in the name of Jesus, to help us in our walk with God. So our walk will become enjoyable, fruitful, productive. Our walk will become long-lasting, we will not a victim along the way. Instead, we will finish victoriously, triumphantly. Hallelujah. And on top of that, we will have people behind us who are following the Lord themselves because we have become a blessing to them. We have become an instrument of God to open our eyes. Hallelujah. Praise God. That is one big challenge for those who claim to be walking with God. Mm. When you are walking with God, do you intensely, fervently, seriously praying that as you walk with God, God will make your life a blessing to people around you so that in return, they will become excited to follow you in your walk with God and themselves becoming fellow pilgrims with God. Amen. You already know, we already know that when the life that God has loaned to us will end, all the things that we have accumulated from this world, money, properties, education, etc., etc., he will not bring them with us. Hmm. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, Bible says. Meaning material things cannot enter the portals of heaven. Hmm. But people can, especially those people who have experienced, you know, the transformative work of God's Holy Spirit. The grace of the, the the grace of Jesus Christ, you know, poured out in them, so that even while they were sinners, you know, God will begin a glorious work of changing, saving their lives, getting them ready, Hallelujah, to live their lives forever with Him. So as a way of encouraging us all, let's continue to relate properly with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's know Him more. Let's talk to Him. Let's listen to Him. Let's obey Him. 
Let's pray all the time. Let's learn to sing, you know, spontaneous songs of worship. Not just the worship that we learned previously, the songs we used to sing, who were given by God to other people. But let's learn. You know, let's try to practice outbursts of joy expressed in singing. It does not have to be a very well placed words. It can just be a tune. That's what it means by Paul when he said in Ephesians 5, Do not be drunk with wine wherein it leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your hearts to the Lord. That's what Paul was saying. We learn to do that by ourselves. Maybe when we're taking a bath in the morning, as we get ready to go to our work or business, now we just hum tunes to sing them inside of us. Even without lyrics. Songs of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It is very important to develop that practice in each one of our life. As we do, we are reminding ourselves that we are on a journey. We are walking with the Lord, walking with His Holy Spirit. We are learning to partner with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are learning to avail of the services that He has. And He's excited to extend to us to help us. Praise God. And for all we know, by and by, we will have a song that others can sing as well. Amen. And we'll bless them. We'll inspire them. Praise be to God. Also, the important role and indispensable role of the Word of God, the Scriptures. That's why we need to really regularly read God's Word. This habit should have been established in each Christian's life long time ago. So that even though we are busy with all the things in this world happening, we have to work, we have to find some money because there are bills to pay. And yet, we do not neglect God's Word. We always find time throughout the day, in the morning, at noon, in the evening, to read God's Word, to meditate on God's Word, to learn, to study God's Word. Hallelujah. Asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us through His Word, because the main, the main avenue in which the Spirit would speak to the people of God is through the Word of God, the written Word of God, Scriptures, Bible. That's why these two, they go together. As I said, they are indispensable in our walk with God. Yes, it would help us when there are people around us who are joining us in the journey. But there are moments, there are periods in our life in which we find ourselves alone. And the people who are joining us in the walk of God, they are somewhere else. They are in another city, another province, they are in another town. They are not with us at the moment. And yet we know that the Spirit of God is with us. In fact, He is inside us. He lives inside us. And He stays there forever when we have the Word of God. There are even moments in Christian life where in the Word of God is taken away from them and they have nothing to read. And yet, the Word has already been planted in their hearts. David said, Your Word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against you. Your Word I have treasured in my heart. I have hidden your Word in my heart. That's why it's so important, brothers and sisters, that as you read God's Word, you ask the Holy Spirit to help you retain the words that you're reading, the stories, the concepts, the values, the lessons, the principles. Even if you may forget the chapter, you may forget the word. You try to remember, where can I find this particular verse in the Bible? And try as much as you may 
to remember. You can't remember the exact chapter, the exact book, the exact verse. Nevertheless, you know that this is God's Word. <laughs> Somewhere in the Bible, it's there. So it's okay if you forget forget the chapter and the verse and forget the book. For as long as you remember and you can quote that it is the Word of God. You know when Jesus quoted verses against the enemy, against Satan, he did not cite the, ver the chapter and the verse. He just said, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. There is no need. Man, it will help if we give, so it will inspire others. Others who are, you know, in their kindergarten level of studying scriptures, you know, they will benefit when we share with them the chapter and the verse and the book. But for your own personal life, for your own personal edification and inspiration, you do not need to memorize all the chapters and all the verses. Just remember God's Word. Memorize God's Word. Practice God's Word. You are walking with God and these are indispensable tools, you know, that God has made available for us. Holy Spirit, His Holy Word, and His Holy People. That is why we also we must learn to relate with God's people. Even as we are learning to relate and become intimate with the Holy Spirit, in like manner, we need to relate properly and become close with our brothers and sisters because there are, these are the people whom God has provided us with to you know, help us in our journey. Hmm. We already know that your chance of making it in the long journey of walking with God when you are alone is little. It is amplified when you have other companions with you who will help you. Mm. Two is better than one. A three chord is not easily broken. That's what Proverbs says. So welcome these people into your life. Appreciate their willingness, their availability, their presence in your life, especially at the critical seasons of your life. You know, remember them in prayer, value them, hallelujah, affirm them, graciously thank them or humbly thank them for their contribution. Some of these people are not physically present with you or beside you, but they are present, for example, through the books that they have written. You know, personally, I have been so much blessed from the lives of people that I have known them only through the book that they have written. I am inspired by Derek Prince, by Yungi Cho, of course, by so many others. Hallelujah. Smith Wigglesworth, even D.L. Moody, uh, Andrew Morey, A.B. Simpson, William Carey, uh, Adoniram Yudson, Yudson Taylor, uh, Robert Morrison. Wow. Some of these people, you hardly know them. But these were people who have walked with God during their lifetime and they ended their physical existence on earth in triumph and victory in faith. They held on to the faith, walking with God with so much difficulties they have gone through, and they fulfilled their assignment to the best that they could. They died somewhere out there. They were willing to be forgotten by the world for as long as heaven knew who they were, and their names were already included in the book of life. That is what it means to really walk with God. We are not here to build a name for ourselves. Especially if we are trying to use the name of Jesus so our own name will become greater and more famous than himself. That is a temptation that many were not able to escape. 
but we want to stay away from those. We want to focus on a simple way of living our life for Jesus. And this is the way. Hallelujah. Amen. We are willing to become anonymous as far as this world is concerned for as long as God knows who we are. Amen. And on the day when everyone will stand before the judgment seat of God, we will be standing there with our heads high, held high mm. because we have done the best that we could walking with God. I would continuously inspire you to continue walking with God. The world before me, behind me, the cross before me. Hallelujah. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for this morning. We bless and honor you, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your kindness, for your grace, for your love, for your mercy. Holy Spirit, thank you for uh, our, an indispensable person that's accompanying us, helping us all along, teaching us, guiding us, reminding us, showing us the way, protecting, preserving, comforting, building us up, encouraging us. And there's so much more that you are doing and you will do, Lord, in each one of us. So that as we walk with God, we shall become a blessing to people around us. People around us in our homes, in our workplaces, marketplaces, and wherever we go. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, Father, for giving us your word. Hallelujah. Your word which is the lamp on our feet and light on our path. Hallelujah. Salamat ka, dear Father. And I pray, O oh Lord, that those people surrounding us as fellow pilgrims, they will increase in number. More and more will join, O oh Lord, the ranks of those who want to live a simpler life following you. And our life every day is a worship, Lord, under you. Everything we do, everything we say is a worship under you. It is a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to you, O oh Lord. This is truly the way to worship you. We bless you, the Father God. In Jesus' name. Amen.